OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. I taught basic skills uh, for over 30 years. And then I retired and I'm now a subject matter expert with OTAN. I'm very excited to uh, share with you Google Classroom part two. Um, if you missed part one, don't panic. You can access the slides for part one and part two online. And I'll put that information in the chat at the end of the presentation. Right. Okay, so then I give you all the bandwidth possible so that we're all good. All right, let's get started. Um, she mentioned the homework. Um, if you want to get credit more for uh, more hours for um, on your certificate, the way you do your homework is you send me a copy of your course. You just send me the link in, in the email to me, and then I can see that you've been working on a course, and that's the homework. All right. From our last meeting, I recorded some of your questions. If there are any other questions, please write them in the chat. Um, I'll be paying attention to that while we go through the program. Um, here are some of the questions. Uh, I still don't get pubs and clubs. How do I move files, docs, sheets from my drive to my Google Classroom? What is the classroom drive folder? How do I create a quiz in Google Classroom? What ways can I communicate with my students? How do I grade assignments? How can I use rubrics? How do I import grades from quizzes into classroom? How do I use the gradebook? So these are our objectives to kind of cover those things. We'll review the tips, answer the questions from part one, um, looking at topics, navigation, communication. Um, we're gonna look at quizzes, where a student finds the assignments, where a teacher finds the assignments. Grading, including rubrics, suggesting comment bank, and setting up the classroom grade book. When you have questions, ask them and I'll address as we go. All right. These are the tips that I've learned. Create a demo student. What your students see on their screens and what you see in your teacher account are two different things. Create a student account. If your district generates student accounts, then find a teacher who will let you use their account to enroll as a student, then use that account to demonstrate with the students. If you're not using a district account, then create a Google account just for your classroom and resources. Three, archive your courses. This way you will not have to recreate the course every quarter. Create quarter, quarter one, two, three, four, and then come back and reuse them you will only have to add the dates. Four, you will receive notification each time your students do an assignment, send a comment. If that is more notifications than you want, you can turn them off or at least decide which ones you want to receive and which ones you'll access on Classroom itself. Five, number your assignments. This makes it easier to reference assignments when talking about them with the students or trying to find them in the gradebook. Six, use due dates to activate Google Calendar. The calendar date includes links to the assignments so students can find the assignment on the calendar. And seven, use to review and to do, and we will look more at those today. Okay, how to incorporate Google Keep and Jamboard into Google Classroom. All right. Hmm. Google Keep is, you can get to it from your calendar. Um, that's a really good question. Keep in classroom. And I don't have an answer for that right away. Jamboard, you can link to. That, one, that one's not hard. Keep, I guess you could link to. Uh, I used it through my drive with my students and I had them then use, um, keep to take notes from the board and stuff so that they could learn to be able to do that. So I demonstrated 
from the beginning how to use Keep with the students so that they could learn how to use it to maximize taking notes, especially if it was from a screen and they could just take a picture of the screen and then it would go over into their Google um, Docs. And that was powerful for them and it saved them a lot of time. Um, yes, official word now, you can link to Keep as well. So there you go, keep.google.com and then just share it with your students and that will work. So that's good to know. How do you turn off notifications? Okay, I will demonstrate that. I'm writing it down so that I can show you how to turn them off because that's very important in my opinion because the first time I saw my um, Gmail account after I started Google Classroom, I was mortified. And so, yes, definitely you'll want to know that. And that's the big reason why you want a Google account that is specifically just for Google Classroom. Then what happens in your Gmail account, it won't matter because it's all your account. But if this is also your personal account and you're trying to wade through it and find other notifications, it's a mess. So definitely you want to know how to do that. Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. Again, we're going to review to try to prevent confusion. Does everyone understand the difference between the public Google account May, and to make a classroom there, we're calling that the pub, and a district account, Google Classroom, and we're gonna call that the club. The pub represents your public account. You can use regular Gmail accounts. The club recommends, represents district accounts, and the two don't mix. You cannot access the district Google Classroom unless you're using district accounts. Students cannot access the district Google Classroom with their regular Gmails, and vice versa. So don't create your classroom in your Gmail account and then try to have your students access it with their district assignment, student, district assigned student numbers. If you create a Google Classroom, use a regular Gmail. You cannot make a copy of it and you cannot share it so, with a district person. So if you make a Google Classroom with your Gmail account and then you're, you're, suddenly your school goes to district accounts, this is what happened to me, I thought, no problem, I will take my Google Classroom and I will just make a copy of it to put in my district account. You cannot do that. You have to recreate the entire thing. So if there is scuttlebutt that you're hearing that they're planning on changing over to district accounts, then you may wanna hold off creating your Google Classroom until you've got that Google account or bug them and say, I want my Google account so I can have it ready to go. And Okay, I don't see any, we'll go on. Okay, when I first introduced Google Classroom, um, some feel that everything seems really complicated. And so I'm gonna try and give you some things to make it simpler. One is organization. So consider how you'd like to organize your Google Classroom. Here are some quick ideas. Use the topics feature to organize by dates, by week. The screenshot you're looking at has the classroom organized by weeks with all the assignments for that week in the topic area. Or on this screenshot, you see a classroom organized by activities, namely introduction, vocabulary, practice, practice reading, success lessons. Or this classroom is organized by topic in a given subject. Here we see number sense, decimals, fractions, or one more method, in this classroom, topics are organized by reoccurring activities. This sounded very interesting. Maybe you'll incorporate them into your regular topics. You could have a topic called classroom materials on top and include the syllabus and a link to the class website. So you could have the assignments for today. Then each day that activity moves down, leaving the daily focus at the top. Or you could have a topic for the beginning of the day activities called bell ringers and another topic for the end of the day reflections. There's a lot of choices and they make things interesting and easier for the students. Here's another tip. Demonstrate navigation to the students a lot. A weekly, almost daily. They just either aren't paying attention or they don't get it or they forget. There are many ways to get around the Google Classroom. The easiest way is the to use the tabs 
at the top. We're in student view. How do I know? Notice the grade tab is missing. Also in my notes, you demo Pete. Another thing to demonstrate to the students, in classwork, you can see assignments organized by topics at the left, number one. So the student can quickly get where they want without having to scroll down all the assignments. Also, a student can use view your work at the on the top left, that's a two. This gives students a list of assignments to do, assignments that are overdue, ones that have been completed and even graded. Another cool feature to show your students, we're gonna look at this again, go to the three horizontal lines at the top left, often referred to as the hamburger. This works for teachers and students. Once you open the menu at the top left, reading from the top down, at one, you have a link to the screen where you can join or create. At two, there's a link to the Google Calendar where the assignments are listed. At three, this is new. For the teacher, there's a division between the old to do and the new to review. Courses you're teaching, all of them, that have assignments you need to review are in one place, or you can view them individually in your current courses. At four is the courses you are enrolled in as a student and assignments you need to finish in those courses. At five is archived classes. As mentioned earlier, if, you li if you're like me, you reuse your courses each year, create a course for each quarter and archive them for next year. And finally at six, settings. And this is the place where you can change your password and turn off notifications or modify them, change them as you want. So that's where you're going to find how to turn off notifications. You're going to go up to the top left of the screen where there's the three horizontal lines. You're going to click on it. You're going to go all the way down to settings. And then there's a whole section on notifications because they allow you to decide which notifications you want to see. Maybe you'll want to see some, but not all. I didn't want to miss emphasizing the to-do feature. At number two on the screenshot, everything the student, now we're looking at the student view. We looked briefly at the teacher view. This is the student's view. So this is their to-do. Everything the student needs to do is on one list. Let's say they're in more than one Google Classroom, maybe yours and the teacher next door. This list has the assignments for all the classes that are due. So the student can stay on top of things. Very cool for them. But also, if this is the teacher view under to review, you're going to see all that you need to do for all the courses that you're teaching. So this, dividing that up and adding it so that you can be a student, very, very nice. All right, now, Let's look at ways you can communicate with your students. First, on the left screenshot in stream, you can comment with the class through comments posted in the stream. All the students see these posts. This is a great place for announcements and discussion. At the top right in classwork, you can write private comments in grading assignments. Finally, you can email your students individually or as groups using the people tab. So all of them allow you to communicate in one way or another. There was a question last week about the class drive folder. What we're looking at here is the class drive folder in the teacher view. This folder is automatically created by Google. It appears in classwork top right, the link to it. You see this in the left screenshot with the class drive folder encircled. On the right image, I've opened the class drive folder. Each assignment has a folder with all the students' work. One of the folders, which is circled, is named templates do not edit. That was new. I think they did that because of the mess that it caused. All right. So here's, here's a look at each. Each classroom you create will be put in this classroom folder. If I open one of the assignment folders, I will see all the student assignments done. You have a copy of all their work. That is shown in the left image. In this practice course, I only have three students and each one did the assignment. So there's three. 
In the image at the right, you see all the assignments I created. Google calls them templates, and they are all in the same folder. You can see my attitude displayed by the concerned chicken. This is my ABE Read Morning Classroom. It was the folder created by Google Classroom. As you can see, it is filled with 66 assignment folders, one for each assignment. And in the midst of them is the template folder. Inside it are all my assignments, not organized by folders or subjects. Here's a screenshot of one of my quiz folders in my drive. To keep myself organized, I put my assignments in my drive, organized by subject and quarter. Then when I need to find one, I can do so easily. I cannot stop Google from putting my assignments, the ones I create, in the template folder. That's, they do that automatically. That's what they do. But so I stay organized. I create a folder of the assignments. This one is assignments for language arts. What you're seeing is quarter one. And then I could put all my quizzes in one place so that I could find them and refer to them and change them, modify them, whatever I need to do. Any questions about that before we go to the next topic? So you're going to have a class folder set up for you. It's called Classroom. In mine, I changed the color of it so that I didn't accidentally click in it. <laughs> it's red and I stay out of it. Now, if I need to access a, stu access a student's assignment, I can find it there. And those are organized by folder, each a folder for the assignment. So that organization is great. My problem was how they organized my assignments that I created that I wanted a little bit more control. So I organized them in other folders in my drive, okay? All right, now let's look at quizzes. Google Form can be used for many purposes. You can create a class profile. I always do, I love that, I use it. Um, it's the way I can have all the students' emails in one place, I can read them. I also have their phone number in one place. I can use that, so I always make a profile. You can take attendance. You can use it to see what students have learned. You can use it as a reflections or exit ticket. You can also use it to create a quiz. In my class, we used it as a formative assessment along the way, not evaluating what the student finally knew. But you can use the quiz for that too. As we're doing online courses now, Google Classroom has the ability to open and then close the quiz as you wish. You can assign a quiz to only students who missed the earlier time, no other students able to see or access it. And I did this when I was doing the online. Um, students would be ready to take a quiz. I would make the assignment, put the quiz in it, only give it to that student, turn it off when I, if I had a, a desire to make sure that they had it timed, and you can do all of that with Google Classroom and quizzes. There are two ways to insert a quiz and they have benefits and downsides. The first is to go to classwork, create the quiz assignment. The benefit if you are in a district account is you can click on import quiz right at creation. The downside is that class drive folder is not organized and so finding that quiz will be a problem. The second way is to create the quiz in my drive using the form choice. In classroom, you create an assignment and then import it from your drive. The benefit is all your quizzes are organized and not just thrown together in the class drive folder. The downsize is that you will have to go back in the assignment and select import quiz to get the score to automatically show up in the gradebook. So let's look at that a little more. Truly, this is an opinion. And there's no right or wrong. You just need to know what you're looking at. You can create a quiz by selecting create quiz assignment in classwork. Google creates a folder in your drive called classroom. In that folder, all the assignments and quizzes, everything is placed together in the template folder. This makes finding the specific quiz you want more difficult. Instead, you can create folders in your drive, organizing the assignments, the quizzes separately. 
What this means is you would create the quiz as an assignment and not use the create quiz option. Okay, I'm either very, very clear, I've got you utterly confused. All right. Now, before last, last week, I told you I love using due dates. Then calendar assists the students in knowing what is due. Notice the ability pointed to in the center of the screen to use lock mode. This makes it so that Chromebook will not go to any outside websites during the quiz. That's cool. Sadly, it only works for Chromebooks at this time. The last line is grade importing. The black arrow at the bottom is pointing to this toggle. Select it or otherwise you will have to go to the quiz to find the score and transfer the score yourself to the gradebook. All right. This is a review from last time, so I'm going to be fast. We're looking at how does a student find out what's due? The student can find out what's due before he even enters the classroom. There will be a to-do and calendar at the top on the image, arrows are pointing to both. And the large arrow below is pointing to the current assignment, due Wednesday, vocabulary assignment two. So even before he gets in the classroom, he's aware of the assignments that are there. Students can also find out what is due in stream. In the image on the left, when they click the view all link with the arrow pointing to it, they will open a screen as seen on the right. There they will see assignment, assigned work, missing work, and done, and will be able to see their scores. Classwork also displays student assignments to do. If at the top left they click on view your work, they'll see a menu at the side which includes all, assignment, returned, and missing. Just a note, if they had clicked on class drive folder, they would access their own work again. So you can see that there's like three ways that all cross and they all work to get the students so that they can see what they need to do. You will have to demonstrate this a lot to make sure they know where it is. All right, let's look at grading. You have similar paths to seeing the assignments, just like the student. One, before entering the class, you can see the assignments that are due. Two, in stream at view all. Three, in classwork on the assignment itself. Four, in people for individual students. Five, in the grade book. And six, from to review in the hamburger. We'll look at each one. You may think, grief, I am so confused. Instead, look at each, find the one that works best for you. I have tried several, and most often, at the end, I was using gradebook, but they each are good. All right, so here you have on the left, before entering the classroom, you can see a list of the assignments that are due this week. On the screenshot, you see classroom part two with the three vertical dots on the right. If you select those dots, you have choices to move, copy, copy the invite link, edit, copy the course, or archive it. So those are the choices you have from that slide. So on the left, you see the assignments due on Monday, the assignment due on Tuesday. And then if I did click the three dots, I would have these choices. Uh, student asked how you archive a course. It's done here on this front screen. So if you need to do that. Take a look at the image on the left. We are in stream. The link view all is circled. If you click on it, you will open up the screen you see on the right. At the top, you see the course name. There is a drop down menu. So if you want to see, uh, to see assignments in other courses, you can. Um, you can make it so you're seeing all the work in all your courses that need to be graded, or you can just see the assignments in this course. In the first column, titled Turned In, you see the two circled. This means there are two assignments turned in that you haven't graded yet. In the second column, the three is circled. This is the number of students that were given the assignment. In the third column, the one is circled. This shows how many of those assignments you have graded. 
before Google created the gradebook, this was my go-to page. And I would come here and quickly see that I have five assignments needing to be graded. How do I know? First column, you have the one, then you have the two, then you have the one and the one. And that's how I knew that I had five that needed to be graded. So my goal was to make sure that that first column was all zeros, then I was caught up. A second way to find the student work is go to the assignment itself in classwork. On the left screenshot, you see an assignment titled Latitude and Longitude. Click on View Assignment, it's circled. That will open up the screen and then you'll, that you see on the right. Down the left side of that, you see student names. The top group is turned in, BPAY student has turned in the assignment, but I've not graded it yet. So the fraction appears no score over 10, meaning that there are 10 points possible and I haven't scored it yet. Continuing down the left column, there are the assigned students. Samuel has been assigned, but he has not turned it in. So there, here it appears in red saying missing. The final group of students on the left is graded. Zara Demo's assignment has been graded and you see the score of 10. A second, I'm checking the chat. Oh, you have a question about creating a quiz and it shows up as draft. Okay, let's look at that. Ah, excellent question about due dates. Okay, we'll look at that one too. All right. Um, okay, so we're going back up to look at the numbers. Um, on the top middle, you see the name of the assignment, seven, latitude and longitude. Beneath it are the numbers one, 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 meaning one turned in, one assigned, and one graded. Beneath that, you'll see the assignments. If you click on each one of those, you'll be able to access the work, the assignment the student did. We're gonna look at grading in a minute. All right, now, I wanna show you, I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to show you your questions. Okay, all right, let's see if I can do this. All right, so we're going to classes as a teacher. Here I am, you're all seeing it, classroom part two. Here's the two assignments that are due. And there's the three vertical dots that allow you to move this. Maybe I want this classroom part two to be over here or over here or something like that. I can, I can move it. Um, I can copy the invite link. That's gonna be useful. If I need to help a student get into the classroom, I can send this to them in an email. I can edit this, the title and such. I can make a copy. So remember I said that if you're wanting to make a copy of your course and give it to somebody, or you're gonna want it to be able to use it another time and you don't wanna archive it, mostly this is to sharing it with another teacher. This is where you do it. You copy the course here. Okay, and then also you can archive it. So now I'm gonna go in, we're gonna to go to quiz. All right. So the creating a quiz is up here in classwork. All right. Come up here, create. You see the assignment choices you have. We talked about if you choose to use quiz assignment or if you choose to use assignment. If you use quiz assignment, you can create the quiz right here. If you create it with assignment, you would create the quiz using form in your, um, your drive folder, okay? Everybody's good. If you have questions, let me know and I can show you that. All right, so I'm gonna go here. I created a quiz, however, it shows up as a draft. Okay, all right, so here we go. Now I'm here, I'm going to use this, I'm gonna call it a quiz demo. And I'm gonna come here, because there's no quiz here, I could create one here using form here. I can do that, you can see that I can. But I'm assuming that I have created this already and it's in my Google Drive. So I'm gonna go there. This is my Google Drive, and I want my quiz. All right, so quiz on, we can use this one. All right, so I'm going to insert that. 
Okay, here's my quiz. Now, it's going to appear as a draft and I'll show you why. When I come up here to assign, if I don't assign it, I can keep it as a draft. When would I do that? I would do that if I wasn't, I don't have a date yet. Um, I usually create my Google Classrooms two or three weeks before the new quarter. Most times I know my calendar. I know the school's calendar. I know when I want to assign the different assignments. But sometimes I don't know the date. And with quizzes, it might be that that date might change. And so I could just save it as a draft. So I have it here. I have my quiz. Let's put the points. I'm only going to give it 10 points. This is not that big a quiz. So let's go here and do 10 points. I'm going to put it in the topic because if you put it in a topic, it's going to go where the students are going to find it. I'm putting it in quizzes. And they'll be able to find it on the left. Um, now, this is where I used this when I was using quizzes and I was only giving the quiz to one student. So I would put it here and I have my BPA student, I have Samuel and I have Zara. So if this quiz is only supposed to go to Samuel, I would only make it so that he would be able to see it. Okay, so I can do that. Um, now, if at this point, I just am not quite sure when I want it to be used and I save it as a draft, then let me show you what it looks like. All right. Remember I said that I was going to put it in quizzes. Here it is, quiz demo, and it has a draft here. To make it so the draft disappears, I have to give it a due date, or I have to, if not a due date, I need to, let's go here, let's go inside of it, and I'll edit it. And so here I am back again with it, and I'm going to come up here to assign, and if I either assign it, which is just clicking right here, then it will appear immediately. Or if I schedule it, I'll click on schedule, I can come here to the little carrot to the side, and then I can put the due date. Also, one of the things that I wanted to show you, but I clicked too fast, is this time. If you're using this and you want your students to only have a certain time, I'll say to the student, uh, the quiz opens at eight o'clock. And then I can come in here and I can close it down. It doesn't have a close time where you can, it will automatically close it. You'll have to come down. You'll have to come back in and close it for them. Maybe they'll do that in the future, okay? But if I don't do that, it will remain a draft and the students won't see it. So let's come up here and just assign it. They're gonna say, the students are gonna see this right away. And they're saying, that's what I want. And so if I came to the student, okay, here I am the student. Oh, I think I'm in the wrong course. I think I am. We'll have to show up from the teacher. All right. If I come up here and I go, I'm going to go to stream. Stream has posted the assignment right here. This is what they always do. Everything that you do, it goes right at the top. And so if the student wants to see all the assignments this quarter, they're all here. Scroll of death, all here. They just keep getting shoved down but I can always put an announcement that will appear right up here at the top. So go back to classwork. We're gonna scroll down to quizzes and now it appears. They can see it. It was posted at 1.40 p.m. and we'll be able to see it. Let me show this as a student. We're gonna go in. I'm going to go in as Zara. Okay, so now I'm Zara. And she's only got the class that we've got. So if I go in as Zara and I go to classwork and I scroll down to the quizzes, see it's no longer a draft. And this one, because I put no due date on it, it won't appear in the calendar. These others will, but that one will not. So they will only be able to see it here. Okay. Okay, the next question. Okay, how can I assign different due dates? I have students enrolled continually in my class. Okay, what I usually do is I put the due dates on so that Google Calendar is activated. I don't put the Google uh, due dates on 
because then there will be, oh, you're too late. Now it's too late. You can't get points. Because I was ABE, I didn't worry about that. I know some other teachers are very, very careful that they want students to have their assignments in by a certain time. That wasn't important to me. So I just put them so that they were available to the students on Google Classroom. But if you want to, you said, I have students enrolled continually and you want to assign different dates. Um, this, everything that they see is here. None of them disappear. So they can go back and they can see assignment five, assignment six, assignment seven. They can see assignment one. They can see all the assignments. They will all be there and they can go back and do them. If I want something for only one student or only a group of students, if I come in here and I'm going to view the assignment and I'm going to come up here. Oh, you know what? I think I'm still with Sarah. I am. Let's go back to, okay, I'm the teacher now. Okay, I'm going to go to view assignment and I, here's the instructions. See, all I see here is the grading place. But if I come up here to instructions, I can see what I assigned. And if I come up here to the three dots, I can edit it. And I can edit the assignment or, or more importantly, I can edit the students. Let's say this particular assignment, um, Zara demo got it wrong and I wanted to do it again. And so I can give it to her or I could organize my assignments so that I have uh, assignments that are created for different groups different abilities, some easier, some harder. And I could do that and assign them only to the students that I want to get that assignment. And it will appear in their Google Classroom. It won't appear in the others. Okay, the next question is, if I create a quiz using Google Forms, can I add a link instead? Yes, 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 yes. Which way is more convenient, adding a link or a quiz from Google Drive? Okay, the reason I would put it so that there that I actually inserted the quiz here, I added it here, was so that the student is here. Um, I don't want them to have to go someplace else. Before I had Google Classroom, I taught using Google Drive. And I had shared folders, and I had folders that were student folders that they linked to me so that I could see their work. It's tricky. And I would have to demonstrate quite a bit because the students would get lost. So for me, I would tell you to put the quiz inside the classroom, not leaving it in your drive and having them link to the drive. Now, the quiz is in your drive. This is not the quiz here. This is a link to the drive, but it's here so the student can access it easily. I don't use points in my class. Is there any way to cancel out that section? Well, not cancel it out, but you can go to this where it says ungraded, okay? So yes, you can make it so that um, everything is ungraded. They're just, just uh, activities and just assignments that you want them to do. Any other questions about what we're looking at right now? If not, we'll go back and take a little bit more look at the grading, okay? All right, so what you're seeing then is on the left where it's, this is in the teacher. How do I know it's in the teacher? Because it's got these turned in, uh, assigned, grade. It also has the link to the, to the uh, assignment. It's a worksheet that they have to fill in. If I click on view assignment, which is circled on the left, I get the screen on the right. And this is where all grading used to be done. OK, there's other links to the assignments now that are available in um, class in uh, the grade book. But this one is another way to always see it. So on the left, you see the students names. You see those that have turned them in. I have not graded this one. That's right here. Turned in, haven't graded. It's the fraction with no top. Then under the middle section, this is assigned Samuel, his assignments missing. Now, for me, I ignore that. I just go in and uh, when he turns in his assignment, whenever he turns in assignment, it will say late, but I ignore that. Again, that doesn't bother me. Um, 
you're right, open entry, students come, students go. One of the real powerful things with Google Classroom is that I had students that actually did every single assignment that I gave them because they could go back and find them. That was cool. All right. Now this is the teacher view of what's due for Zara. Where did I find it? In people. I went to the people section and I went to scroll down to Zara. When I clicked on her name, this is what I saw. So she has one, two, three, four, five, six missing assignments and she's turned in two, okay? And so I use this screen when I'm talking to the student at my desk. If I go to grade book, then they're seeing other people's grades too. But here, they only see their own work. And on the left, you see all turned in, returned, and missing. And that organizes them further. This is grades. What you're seeing is an open grade book. On the left, you're going to see all the students' names going down. On the top, you see the assignments going across. In the middle, you see at one, turned in, needing to be graded. It is a fraction with the top missing. The bottom number tells you how many points are available. At two, you see a missing assignment. And at three, you see a grade given of 10 points. Remember the hamburger icon, the three vertical lines at the top left of every page? As an aside, I had to change this slide because Google recently changed this. Now, if you open the hamburger, you're gonna see the new menu at the left and those two links are circled that I told you about. The one that is to review and the one that is to do. To review, when you click on it, and that's what I've got on the right, at the top circled is all classes. If I click on the little carrot beside it, it will list all the classes I teach. And so I could grade papers only in one class or the screen that you see right here, you see that I have, what do you know about Google Classroom? This question, 12 people have turned that in. None of them have been returned. So I have work to do there. But in a different class, that one was classroom practice course. This one is classroom part two. This one, the reflections, writing assignment, three have been assigned, no one's turned it in yet. But you see that I have all the assignments here that I need to do some work in, okay? I have another assignment down here, the geography test, that has been turned in and I haven't corrected it yet. All right. Now, this one was a surprise to me and I, showed it to you before, but I want you to see what it looks like. On the left, circled, is a course that I am a student in, okay? It was a, it was a, a classroom that is, uh, one of my students shared with me and she wanted me to see it as a student. So I enrolled in it. If I click on the to-do up here, the, you see that I have no assignments to do. But if I did, if I, she had given me an assignment and I hadn't done it, it would appear here on the right. So you have not just the things that you have to do as a teacher, but if you've enrolled in a course, maybe your school's using Google Classroom for PD. And if that's the case, then it would appear here and you would be able to see if they've assigned you to do something and you haven't done it. All right, now let's look at grading. This is really cool stuff. All right, what to remember, four things where we looked at how students find their work. We've also looked at where you can find student work to grade. So now we're gonna look at how to create a rubric, grading individual assignments, and we're gonna look at the grade book. Then we're gonna go live and demo some of it so that you can see it in action, okay? And remember still that you can ask questions all along as we go through, all right. All right, creating a rubric. This is a screenshot of an assignment. The arrow on the left points to add an assignment from Drive. The arrow on the right allows you to create a rubric. You have three choices, create a rubric, reuse a rubric, and import 
from Sheets. Rubrics are added to Google Classroom right before the pandemic and they can help with grading. They take a little work up front because you have to figure out the criteria you use in grading. The first rubrics I made were comprehensive and I had 10 or more criteria. Now I have realized that for most assignments, that's too much. Now my rubrics usually have three or four criteria, like the number of sentences, did they use their own words? Did they copy and paste? Are there spelling and grammar errors? In this anatomy of a rubric, at one, you can see, add the criterion title. At two, add the points. Three, you add the level title or description. If you click on the plus, you can add another description. For example, what will be worth three points, what will be worth two points, et cetera. And at four, you can add another criteria. After you create the rubric, it'll appear with the assignment and the student can see what you will be looking for in evaluating the assignment. In this image, you see rubric three, criteria, nine points. It's circled in the New Zella reading assignment. So they can click on it right away and see what you're looking for. Here are some reasons to use a rubric. One, students can see the criteria, what it takes to improve, and then once they receive the score, they'll see what they didn't do. Two, once you make the rubric, you can use it over and over. And three, the biggest reason is Google automatically records the score in the gradebook. So it makes it really fast. Now, let's get ready to use the gradebook. First, some more about settings. At the top right, you see a gear. It is right beside the apps box. See the small box on the top right. If you click on this, you scroll down to the general section and that's where you can access your class code and the invite code. Here's also a second place you can control whether or not students can post, comment, or if you don't want to be the only one that can do that. But if you continue to scroll down, then you see grading. Let's look at what you can do to modify your gradebook. The gradebook will be created automatically by Google. So if you never go into this grading section, you're still going to have it. They just do it for you. But you can change it to reflect what you want it to do. On the left image, you see that if you scroll down, you'll come to the grading section. The first part asks you to choose a grade calculation. If you click on the learn more, they will walk you through how to set up the grading. Mostly this is valuable because I think sometimes people they're not sure what the difference is. Okay, well, what do you mean weighted category? What do you mean total thing? And so they'll walk you through that. And that it's a pretty clear tutorial. Um, you have two choices, total points or category grading. In both, grades are calculated for you and you can let students check their overall grade for the class. If you don't want to use a grading system, you can choose no overall grade. You can create categories for overall grade, total point or weighted. And then when you get done with this, scroll down to the bottom and click on save. All right, let's look a little bit closer on the image at the left. You'll see the three choices, including no overall grade, total points, and weighted by category. Once you choose one, you open the grade categories at one on our image at the right. At two, you see the grade categories. At three, you can they can reflect quizzes, essays, worksheets, and at four, the point value you want to include. Maybe you want quizzes to be 40% and daily work to be 60%. So that's the weighted one. And I know that's very popular with some teachers because they want to be sure that students that struggle with their quizzes still get credit for the daily work that they do. And you can do that with the weighted one. All right, now let's look deeper into the gradebook. Remember, you get to it by clicking on the fourth tab at the top, grades. And this is what you'll see. At a quick glance, you can see missing assignments in red at one in the middle of the screen. The points you've given a student at two on the left, what assignments the students have turned in, and you see what is needed to grade at three. If you select the three vertical dots beside the grade, see the arrow, you see two choices, return and view submission. 
to get to that drop down menu, you just hover over the points area. And number four is the assignment. If you click on it, you will go to the area where you can grade all the assignments for that assignment. Okay. So again, if I click here where the arrow is and come down here to view submission, I will see the assignment created by Debbie Jensen for this number seven assignment. If I come up here and I click on where number four is, where it's number nine project, group project, I will only see that project work. I won't see all the students who've done that assignment. So you can grade by assignment or you can grade by student, or you can be here at the grade book and just grade wherever there's the fractions that show that somebody has turned in work. So you, you have choices. Okay, let's look close. At the top image, you see one row in the grade book. At one at the left, you see the student's percentage of points of assignments at that time, not overall for the whole course, just at that time, up to that time. At two, you see points on a quiz that have been imported from quiz. You still need to finish the process to return it to the student. So here you see the draft. And this may be another place that you see draft. This draft does not mean that you haven't, um, that the student hasn't done something. What this means is that when you click on it, then the student is notified. Okay, so then it goes from just being posted here to actually being here. So it requires you to click on it. Um, at three, you see an assignment that has not been graded yet. Um, and for this assignment, there are five actual points and the number of points then would be put at the top, okay? If you're viewing assignments from the grade book, you hover over one of the fractions without a top. This means the student has turned in the assignment but you've not graded it. And then you have the two choices, return or view submission. If you click on view submission, or, and I'm showing you the second way you get to that same place. We're going to the student's piece of paper. And the one way is from gradebook. The other way is from the assignment. And that's what we're looking at here. You'll select the grades tab, or you can select the individual assignment down here below. So we see that um, Susan Coulter has not turned in her assignment. It's missing. But down here, there was an assignment turned in, and a score was given there. So though if I clicked under the name Debbie Jensen or Demo Pete, I would actually be able to go to the assignment. So let's look at one. Okay, so you clicked on the student work and you'll see their work. Okay. Um, this is a student writing assignment. Now you can make comments on it and you re can return it to the student. And we're gonna look at the different choices you have available to you to, for what you can do as a teacher. I call them the tools for grading, okay? Um, I can, at one, open the comments history. At two, I can turn on suggesting mode. I like this one a lot. At three, I can create a comment bank. And this, again, is going to take upfront work because you're going to have to create the comments. But how many times do you tell them that the punctuation is missing? Or you tell them that it's misspelled? or you tell them that, so you're repeating yourself all the time. If you create these comments in the comment bank, then I'll show you what happens. Okay, now four is where the grade is put, and then at five is where you can add a private comment. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, so this is the suggesting mode. I can start, once I turn on suggesting mode at number one, I can start typing and I just started typing in six because this assignment had 12 words and the student didn't finish the list of words. So I just typed in, you didn't finish the words. As I'm typing, it comes over here to the comment and you can see the comment appear right there. So that's one way you can grade. A second way is you can just come up here and, and get one of these little comments and there's a little comment under this that we couldn't see and you could click on it. And I started typing in the word end and notice this appeared at the bottom. End punctuation, be sure to include end punctuation, which includes periods, question marks, and exclamation points. If I click on this, it'll now appear in the box. 
And that's what I meant by creating a comments box. You just need to start typing the comment and it will then appear. Saves a lot of time. Another thing that you can do with these is they can be more than a comment box. Let's say you want your students to go back and study um, end punctuation at, um, oh, what's a good punctuation? Um, grammar gorillas, or you could do uh, no red ink. You could actually put the link in here to the actual place on punctuation at another website. And so that they could use this link to learn about what they didn't know how to do or what they had forgotten. All right, now this is the last step in the grading. Again, we see the vocabulary assignment. I have two comments here for, oops, sorry. Okay, I have a comment if you didn't finish your word. And then there's a second one here that is about the end punctuation. Notice where it says comments in blue. You need to click on that. If you don't click on that, it's not, the student's not gonna see it. And when you try to get off this screen, they will say, are you sure you wanna get off this screen? Because you haven't finished, you didn't click on comment. Okay, so up here on the right, let's come down here. Okay, let's say we gave them 15 out of 20 points in the grade, okay? And then I wanted to add this private comment. Great start, finish the chart. I need to click on post because if I don't, they won't get it. I can type that in the private comment, but they won't get it um, until I click on post. Now, then up here at the top on the right, if I click on the little arrow beside return, I can return this submission I can return multiple submissions. So if I don't click on that, I can come over here to these two little arrows by Samuel students' names up at the top where this big black arrow is. It says, can go to next student work on grade. So it'll go to the next student's assignment and I can grade that paper and then I can grade the next one and then I can grade the next one. And then I can come up here and click and I can say return multiple submission. So that can save a lot of time rather than going in and going out and going in and going out. Now, these next slides, uh, when I put this, when I was putting this, creating this uh, presentation, I was creating it and I was working from my um, Google Classroom part two to verify things. And this screen wasn't verified. And I thought, what's going on? And so let me explain it. If you have a district account, we are looking at the quiz. It has import grade here on the side. And when I click on that, that is going to import the grade here at the left automatically. I don't have to go to the quiz to count the number they got right. It does it for me. Now, I need to click on it to get rid of the draft so that it puts it in permanently. Also over here on the right, you see that the last import was made at 432. The reason that would be useful is I'm going to have to import grades as I gr grade these assignments. And so I need to know when the last time I did it so I can do this. So this is very, very cool because as that six is put here automatically, it's also put in the grade book automatically. Very, very cool. But if you're using your Gmail account, you notice there is no import grade tab, okay? So they don't automatically do it for you. You're going to have to go to the quiz and check the grades yourself and then put them here. Once you put them here where the circle is, that will automatically go in the grade book, but they won't automatically go from forms, from the quiz created in forms, they won't automatically go from there to put it here. <sighs> sad. Okay, let's stop and let's go live. That over there. Okay. Now, please put in the chat any questions or any things you want to direct me at. If not, I will kind of just 
start and, and go through and things that I think are interesting. But, you know, I want to I want to do this with what you guys are interested in. OK, I was going to save this, so I'll save that and change the point value. And there we go. Now we're back in the teacher account. How do I know that? Because, well, I know it because I've got this. Uh, instructions student work. If I were at student work, it would have the assignments here that I could access. The students listed here, they have all been assigned, but none of them have done the work, okay? So it's assigned, but there's none done yet. So I need to remind the students, none have been turned in. All are ungraded. I can return all of them here if I want to. So I can grade from Google Classroom, I mean, Google uh, Gradebook, I can grade here from the assignment, okay? And they did add this because this way I can see and modify the instructions to the quiz if I want to change a due date, um, edit it. Let's go to edit. I can change the students that are going to get it, change the points, change the due date. Quizzes, I can add a rubric here if I want. Um, now, here... On this one, what I look at this and I'm saying, what I really need to add is I need to add a link to CNN 10, okay? So let's say I was gonna do that so that the student could see the um, video that they needed to be quizzed on. So I'm gonna come up here to add link. And I'm gonna come up here to my Google above and I'm gonna go to CNN 10. CNN 10 was a discovery I made from a um, webinar I went to. And they use this every single day. I used it once a week, but it's wonderful because they are going to give you about 10 minutes of news stories. And then you can ask the students to summarize them. And they can do that every single week. So I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to take my link and I'm going to paste it here. Now this is going to be um, the one for this week. So this will be a different one for the next week so that I would be adding it again. So it would be for the story for the next week. Okay, what else could I add? Well, this says it's the quiz for this assignment. So, okay, that should do it. That, that should give them what they need for that. But let's say, okay, I'm going to go back to my classroom. Checking the chat to be sure that I'm not ignoring you. Okay, I'm going to go back to classroom, classwork, sorry, I said the wrong thing. And I'm going to come up here to create, and I want to add the CNN assignment. Okay, now, remember I told you to always count your assignments and keep them in numbered form, and I've lost track of which one I'm on. So let's get out, let's go back. Let's see, I'm at 9, 11. Okay, so this is assignment 12. All right, so I'm gonna come up here to create. I'm gonna to go to 12, 12, C and N assignment. I write my instructions here. Paragraph. Okay. Now I need to add the link to CNN. Okay, so I can add that same link. And I think I still have it. Yes, I do. So there's the assignment. But I also want to help them with summary writing because maybe they've not really good at it. So I could add a couple of things. I could, there's a very good video on Senate summary writing in YouTube. I could add a link to that. Um, let's go, let's find it. 
right, so we're going to, oops, sorry. It. Okay, there it is. That's the one I like. It's not this top one. Sean's very good. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make it silent and I'm going to come here to share. And there's my link. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to my assignment. Okay, and I'm going to add the link. And there it is how to write a summary. So I can put a variety of things in here. I can put the source that they need to go to, and I can also give them instructions more of where they, how they can do the summary. Okay, for points, I think I'm going to be getting 25 points for the summary. I'm going to add a due date because I want it on their calendar. So I'm going to give them a week. All right. And then the topic, this should go under, oh, darn, I don't have summary writing. I'm going to put create a topic and I'm going to put writing assignments. So if you have forgotten to put in a topic, you can do it right here. You could also write a rubric and let's go over that because I want to show you how it is to do that. Now there's a question from Gloria. Can students search for a particular assignment if they know the number of the assignment? Um, okay, let's, we'll come back to this. So we're going to save this as a draft. And we'll come up here and they can find assignments under the topics here, here, here. Okay, so they can, they can find them here. Again, remember that I am in the teacher and so you're seeing the teacher view here, but the assignments still appear the same. Um, can there, is there a search for assignments? No, there's no search. So they can't search by just typing in an assignment number. They can search here, and that's probably what I would have them do. I would have them go to classwork and then go to topics. And because it's an assignment, they go to the assignments, and then all the assignments for the quarter will be here. Now, when you create it, you can rearrange them if you put them in an order you don't like, but they will, Google will put them, the most recent one on the top. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the assignment. Mm -hmm. Work. And I got an assignment that is in draft mode. Notice where it is. It's right here at the top because I never put it in. And that's useful because you don't have to search everywhere to find things that you need to work on because it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to go see if this is edit. Yes, edit. And what I want to do is show you how to do a rubric. Okay, here's the rubric. And I'm going to create one. They will keep all my rubrics in one place so I can use them over and over again if I need to. All right, so this is going to be summary writing. Okay, and the first criteria will be, um, what do I want in summary? Um, You can do it as a question, title included, okay. And so for this one, there may only be they did it or they didn't, okay. Points, they get one point if title is included. And here they get zero points if there's no title. Okay, now let's go to add a criteria. Uh, did they reference the author? And that they very often forget that. And so, oh, sorry. Okay, so again, this would either be they did or they didn't. Okay, uh, reference. Oops. Oh, this is the point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One and then R E F E. Okay, and then over here, didn't. Two. Oops, zero, sorry, didn't. Now, one of the things I find with my ABE students is that they copy paste. So they plagiarize. Um, used your own words. 
And so points one used your own words. Okay. Copied. Oops, again, I do that. There we go. Zero points, copied and pasted. Or maybe I should just say copied words. Um, okay. And you can see how this works so that I could add another criterion of support details and things like that. Okay, so so far there are three points here, three points possible in my rubric. I have three criteria. I can add more by just clicking on add another criteria. And up here at the top right, it goes to save. Okay, so now what you see here is over on the right rubric, three criteria, three points. Now let's see if I can get us back to the student. Okay, I'm with Sarah. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into classwork and I'm gonna to go to, oh, I don't think I uh, turned, oh, you know what I did, forgot to do? I didn't assign it. Sarah's not gonna see it until I assign it. So let's assign it. Okay, and I'm assigning it right now. So she should see it immediately. Okay, so let's go back to Sarah and let's come down here to writing assignments. Oh. Not seeing right assignments. Assignments, collaborative courses, tests. Oh, I think I may need to refresh. There it is. Now, notice writing assignments at the top. That's where the Google puts everything, is at the top. So if you don't want it there, then as the teacher, if I don't want the writing assignments here at the top, I can move them down. Okay. I can also grab them and move them down, I think. Here and put it down. I think I'll put it after this. Nope, didn't work. Nope, can't do it that way. I'm going to have to move it. Let's go back. All right, let's move it down. It's down one, down two. They also allow you to move it up if they change your mind. There's some writing assignments. There, now I knew I could pick it up and move it. There we go. Okay, so you can't do it in topics, but you can do it in the body. Okay, Gloria has a comment. I give them different resources they can use during the school year, such as videos and grammar notes. After a while, it becomes difficult to find them. Do you think it would be practical to give them materials as needed each day and add them to a resource section at the top? Absolutely. And that is a very, very good statement. Up here at the top, okay, let's go up to create and we can create material. Now, the material doesn't have any grading ability here. So you can put it in a topic. You can also have it for a specific class. Maybe you create this and you gather all your videos for all your classes and so you want them all to access them. So you could make them a, every one of your classes to see this. So you don't have to create it over and over. But so these are um, class videos. And so you could add all the videos, okay? So let's, let's add one just so you see what it looks like. I'm gonna go down to the YouTube, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna add that um, summary video. I hope that's it. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. Oh, I did it wrong, I did it wrong. I need to put that here, there. There, we go. now you got it. All right, so, and I could add as many videos as I want here. Okay, so you're imagining that they're all here. Now over here at the top right, it says post. It puts it, now I'm gonna to have to give it a minute. In fact, I'm gonna refresh. There it is, right here at the top. Now maybe, maybe I want this to be more obvious. So maybe I would put up here at the top uh, what would you call it that there was an urgent kind of a thing um, classroom videos and I want them to be right here at the top with the topic so let's say I wanted to do that I could come up here to create and I could come down here to topic and I could say uh, video okay. 
that's going to be at the top right here. And I can grab this class videos and I can put it in. Okay. That then I could leave at the top because I decide in here, in stream, I don't get to decide how this is organized. It just top most recent thing goes at the top, then it moves them all down. And so there's no rhyme nor reason to this. It's crazy. But classwork, I can organize it the way I want. And I could keep videos at the top. Or I could have it where I put it here, which was the resources down here at the bottom. And in that, I might put the syllabus. Maybe things they only need to look at once a quarter. But you definitely want them to be able to find it because, like you said, sometimes students come in three weeks in. And so you can say the syllabus and class rules are here in resources, and that's at the bottom of classwork. But you don't want them to have to scroll all the way down for videos that they are going to be using often. So you could create a section here and call it whatever you want. But this can always remain at the top so it's easily accessible. Did I answer your question? Okay, let's go back to our writing assignment. Okay. We're looking at it as the teacher. I have three assigned because I have three students for this. There is the video for the summary. There is the um, CNN video uh, to watch. Okay, and here's the rubric. Okay. Let's look at it as a student. Okay, so here I'm back. I'm Zara again. And I'm coming down to writing assignments. Okay, all right. Now, what Zara gets to see, the same thing. See, at this point, you think everything's fine. And I did this the first day of class. I was so proud. And then I clicked on view assignment. And then that's when you go to the grading area if you're doing the teacher. So this is what the student sees. Okay, notice the criteria right here, okay? All right, so the student sees one point, title included, no title, zero points. One point referenced author, zero points didn't reference author. So they can see what they're going to be graded on right here. Now, how are they going to do this? Okay, where they go is over here to where it says, add or create. If they click on add or create, they have a list of choices of things that they can use to answer your assignment. They could, let's say that they're, they create it in Microsoft Word. Well, they could upload the file from their computer right here. They could write the assignment in their Google Drive and then they could upload it here. They could use a link if there was something that they wanted to share, maybe they found something about the CNN story for this week from another news story. Uh, maybe you told them to look for another news story and you could have them as part of the assignment have to include so that they had to search for news online. Otherwise, they're probably going to create their assignment in, my, in, in Google Docs. So if you click there, they create a doc for them. They don't have to go to Drive to create this. And this is one of the things that I've uh, very much fell in love with. Remember that before I used Google Drive and I ran my class out of Google Drive and the big hassle was students getting lost. Um, students not being able to find things. Um, not remembering how to create something. It's all here. See, they didn't have to go and create that doc. It's created for them. And the link to it is created for them. So that if they don't write their name anywhere on this paper, you will still know it's from Zara uh, because it's linked to hers. Now, I always told my students, please put your name in it because then I could print it and put it up on the bulletin board when we had classrooms. That was a while ago. All right. And then I teach them how to create this. There is a new tool they've added. Wow, I got to share this with you guys. This is new. Citations, so that they can cite the things and the places that they've gone. Wow, 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 wow. Have you ever used the Explore button on the bottom, right? If you haven't seen this, this is another one. I'm clicking on it. 
And so here, if they wanted to explore, let's say the article was about um, COVID in India. Okay. Now they are searching the web and here are articles about that, that they can reference. And as they reference them, the citations, they will assist them in putting the citations in their article, in the thing they are writing. So pretty magical. Um, and makes it so that you can extend the learning past just this single assignment. Maybe I'll go back and I'll change the assignment to say, find an article about what's happening today and cite it and then write a summary and let them learn about searching. Okay, so here, uh, and I always tell them they have to put the by, so I'm going to put that because I don't know who the by is. Um, and then they, had, then they would give the parts of it. Okay, now, so they're going to turn this in. How do they do that? They can turn it in here. This takes them back here. And be sure you include this instruction with your students. They need to turn it in, this button. By clicking the other button that said turn in, which I would have thought would have been sufficient. It isn't, you won't see it. They have to turn it in here. Okay, so now it becomes an attachment. They have turned it in. And now let's go back to teacher. Ah, oh, look at that, one, one turned in already. Yay, so exciting. Let's go. Well, let's go to grades. I wanna show you how to get there. I've shown you how to get to there from assignment, but let's go to grades and let me show you how to get there from grades. Okay, so here, our newest assignment. So all the assignments are done with the, the first one will appear here. And then the second one will appear here, then the third one will be appear here, and that pushes all the assignments to the right. So the very first assignments will be all the way to your right. If I were to grab my scroll bar, you can see it, okay? And did you notice also that when I did that, the names stay there so that you can see easily who that person is? Okay, so that's cool. All right, so we see that Zara, this, this is the assignment we just did. Notice when I hover, nothing's been turned in there. It's worth 25 points, but nothing's been turned in. This is the one that's been turned in. So I will come over here, I hover on it, I get my three dots, and I go to view submission. And there's the assignment. Now, over here, I can put the numbers in for the rubric. I can put one here. Let's, let's, let's assume she did it. And she did refer to the author and she did use her own words. Okay, all right. Now I said this was going to be worth 25 points. That's interesting. Oh. Two out of three. Why is it not three out of three? Oh, there, okay, now, okay. All right, now I can add my private comment here and I can say, well done. Um, I can also come here, and as I hover, you see that little add comment button? So I could add a comment here. Um, okay, click your comment. But I can also come into the body of the text, and I can type... And notice when I did that, this came up, all right? All right, so I can come here and click out of it. And there's my two comments, the one that I typed in and the one here. Now I don't have a comment bank, so let's make one. Comment bank is, there it is. It's this one over here to the right. Okay, so I'm gonna add, com oh, I do have, Okay, so let's say that they didn't use transition words. Okay, so we will pretend that they wrote more, but they left out the transition words. So I'm gonna come here to add a comment. Where's my 
I'm going to use the one up here because there's always add a comment up at the top. Okay. And I'm going to start typing in transition. And there it is. There's the lengthy transition comment. And I can click on that. And then I'll click on comment so that it's added. So all my comments for the um, assignment are here. I've also posted the comment to her and I did the grading assignment. And I can see it by clicking on this round paragraph symbol, I guess, I, I think it looks like that here so that I can see what I've done. I've filled out my rubric. I haven't posted my well done. There we go, let's post it. So that's done. Now, I don't have any other reports that have been done. Zara was the only one that did this. So if I click here and go to the next student, there's nothing there. So I'm going to, well, let's try it. Let's see what happens when I do it. Okay, that BPAY student hasn't turned anything in and Samuel student hasn't turned anything in. And that's my students, I only have three. One of the reasons I personally don't use these arrows that are here is because what you just saw was my reality. I would have 25 students and five turned it in. And rather than just going click, click, click to the next student that turned it in, click, 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 click to the next one, I would go back. And so I would return here, return the work to the student. And then I would go back to my assignment. Okay, so here it is, 25 over 25. If I wanna go back into the assignment itself, I can do it here. It's a zero here, but let's go back up here to the hamburger, my favorite. They didn't used to have this. When I first Google, did Google Classroom, most of these things weren't here. In fact, there was a time when I was not going to use Google Classroom anymore. And it was because every quarter I had to recreate the classroom from start to finish. There was no archive. There was no make a copy. And that was the the, the thing that was the deciding element that I didn't quit at that moment was I had a student who had been sick for two weeks and he was able to keep up with all the assignments. And so I thought, okay, okay, this is worth it. That's never been able to happen before. That's worth it. Then Google changed and you could archive the classrooms. You could do many of these things. They listen to the teachers. And so as the teachers have said, well, how about this? Or how about that? Google has responded. I would tell you that one of the things you should do is you should often go to Google, just Google it and say, what's new in Google Classroom? Because um, you'll find out. That's when I found out this new change here. Because before, under calendar, there was to do. And then you had the listing of the classes that are yours. These are my classes as a teacher. These are my classes that I'm enrolled in. I'm just enrolled in one class. The CCR. And that's when you guys turn to me and give me your assignments, I will be able to see them and be able to see your Google Classrooms. And that's, that's your assignment is make one. Make a Google Classroom and send me a link to the Google Classroom. Uh, you can send me the code. Ah, we should show you that again so you know. How. But first, before we leave this, here's teaching. Under to review, this then tells me all my classes of what I haven't done. One here, one here, two here, one here, 12 here. This is a different class. And so you can see that as a teacher, I can quickly see everything I need to do in one place. That is, is impressive. That is just, that is impressive. Um, it also shows me the ones that I have reviewed. Oh, well, that's really depressing. I haven't reviewed anything. Okay, negligent teacher. Okay, so let's go back and let's go back to this beginning screen. You notice the to do, to review used to be only to do in calendar. Now this to review, brand new. They don't make announcements when they make these changes. You usually find them when you're right in front of the class. <laughs> and then they appear and you go, oh, look at that. That's so cool. All right, so now when you send me your class, what I need from you is that. Now, this is mine, so sending me this will help. But under your classroom, when you set up your classroom, there'll be the class code. So in the email you send to me, be sure you send that. You can also, in the email, send me suggestions or things or things you discover, things that you like. 
Um, I've tried to show you my favorite places. When I originally was grading papers, I did not come here to classwork and do it by assignment. See, I can do that. I can come here and here it is, two have been turned in, one has been assigned and I can add points here. But that wasn't my original. My original was actually in the stream screen where I would go to view all and I would then check here and I would work to make everything zeros, okay? Because if I click on this one where it says one turned in, okay, here's the turned in one. I can click on it. I can go to that assignment and then give the points. Okay, so that was, and then I can click on return. And that was the method I used before. Now I'm gonna go back and show you what I did during, uh, well, when it started. Grades was the new thing uh, right before, the year before the uh, pandemic. And so this one, I just come here and I look at everywhere I've got a fraction and I can see it by just coming to view submission. And here's another one and view submission and then I can add the points. Okay. Now, when I did Google Classroom, no, when I did the Google quizzes, okay, when I used quizzes in here, I was not into it to give them uh, points for whether they got things right or wrong. What I was here for was I, it was how I introduced a topic. So what we would do is we would read about uh, punctuation. Then I would give them a quiz to see how much they'd retained. And then we'd go back and we would rework on the topic. So I didn't expect great things. It was, an, it was uh, just to see how they were doing, kind of a formative assessment. So I set the quizzes up so that they would see the scores immediately. And then I, um, when I would see them here, I would just give them the points. I didn't go back and check. If they got one out of 10, I didn't care. They got five points because they took the quiz. And so for the quizzes, and this was especially true when I was using my Gmail account and they didn't transfer the scores over for me, I would just give them the points here and I didn't worry about that. Okay, do I have anything that you would like me to demonstrate for you in the time that we have left? We have a good amount of time that I could show you. Um, you're good in creating the classroom in the different types of assignments that you might have under classwork, that there are the different kinds. Ah, Google Keep. Okay, let's look at Google Keep. How many of you use Google Keep? Does anyone use Google Keep? Do you all know what Google Keep is? Okay, your assignments are out of order in the grade section. Put numbers in front of them. Um, every mistake that you have made, I have made. <laughs> and it would make me crazy. And so that's another reason I put a zero, 01, zero, 02, and then got to 10 and 10, 11, 12, and I put numbers because then it put my assignments in the order so it was easy in my gradebook. I could refer to them, I could find them. Okay, we're looking at Keep. All right, where is Google Keep? All right, there's several places you can find Google Keep. One of them is in your calendar. You used to save answer keys to assignments and then copy and paste for each student as they submit their work. Okay, you can do that. Um, then being able to then see the answer key and stuff and, and uh, be able to work from it, that's, that's a good way to do it. Um, I would put the key in the Google quiz and so they would, it, it would be uh, corrected. Okay, they'd either be told it was right or wrong. And in that, we'll come back to keep. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to quiz. Okay, I'm gonna go straight to quiz assignment so I can get there fast. All right, so here. Okay, now this is a blank quiz. And here, when I have the answer key, I can, okay, so we're gonna say there's this answer and there's this answer and there's this answer and there's this answer. Okay, now I can then on the answer key, you've got to pick the answer key because then it will correct it. It will correct it for you and tell you how many you got. You also, one thing that I learned um, is 
definitely have them put their name on their quiz. Because uh, if you're using a district account, they will automatically give you the email. If you ask them to put in the email, that is wonderful, except that if it's not a district account, some of these kids, the, the students' names are things like uh, Dodger 5. And I didn't know who Dodger 5 was. And so I always would ask them for their email, but also for their name if it wasn't a district account so that I would know who I'm looking at. And when I come up here to the responses to see who's gotten what, and this is how you will find out what the scores were and what they got. But here, one of the things you can add here is you can add images. So I can browse my images or browse my drive or buy online and I can put questions into the uh, quiz that have uh, in images in it. So it can make the test much richer. I can also add video. So I can add. This is one way to use um, YouTube. Uh oh, my internet's unstable. I hope that doesn't mean that I cut out. Okay. Um, if you put a YouTube video, let's do it put a YouTube video in here. We're gonna use the same one we've been using. Put it in. Chat, this is right on top of what I needed. Okay, let's see if I can do that. I don't think I can. Oh, there we go. All right, so. Oh, I did it wrong. I knew I did it wrong. Okay, there's the URL select. Okay, so now the video is in here in the quiz. Now, on the next screen, I can ask questions about the video. So this is one way. There are several apps out there. Um, Ed Puzzle and there's others that allow you to show a video and then ask questions, but you can do it right here in your Google Classroom. Just put the video in for them to watch, put the questions here, and then they can see what's happening. And you can find out what their responses are right here. All right, now let's go back to Keep. All right, so Keep. Yes, the number, the number needs to be first for Google to read it. Ah, if they were all chapter, it would probably read it chapter one, chapter two, and put them in the right order. It would probably do that. I'm assuming it would. Okay, so we're going to go up here to keep. Now, keep appears in several places, one in your calendar. Okay, so here's my Google Calendar. And along the right side, just a second, there it is. Okay, can you see it? Can you see over to the far right? There is keep and tasks and maps. And these things are links. So that if I put an assignment here in my calendar, one of the assignments from the classroom or something like that, and I want the students to access keep for it, keep comes up right here. And I can then um, put the notes in there. Now, the other way you can do it, let's go to, um, let's go to, let's go to this one. Okay, this is the account that I made specifically just for my Google Classroom. So here we go to keep and you take a note here. Now there's no notes here. Okay, so I can write a note. Um, video on okay, now I can do that. And that note, let's go to it. I can link to it. Here's my link menu, archive, delete, open and keep. Let's open it and keep. All right. Copy it. 
Now here, change the color, remind me, collaborate so that you could share it here. So I could click here and I could share that link with other students, okay? So that's the link that you would, well, that's where we put the collaborators. And if we wanted, to, let's see if we've got a link. Archive, add image, or delete, add label, add drawing, copy to Google Docs. I'm thinking you're going to have to collaborate with it to get it to the students. So you'd put your student email here and then they would have access to it. Now, if I don't see any way, I think that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. The way I use Keep with my students is I have them use it to take pictures of notes, like maybe it's a whole page of data or something like that. And if they take a picture of it with their phones and save it in Keep, they can then transfer it to Google Docs and Google Docs will take the text of what they see and make it editable. It is so powerful for them to be able to learn how to do that. Like maybe you've got notes on the board that you've taken and they can come up and they can take a picture of it from Keep. They need to be in Keep. There's a place that says, take the video, the image. They take that picture and then they transfer it to Docs. Um, to have the individual only this note so that people aren't seeing all the other notes in your keep. I think the only thing that I'm seeing, see, remind me doesn't work, color doesn't work, image, archive, see, all of these things do not allow you to have a um, URL. So I think you're going to have to do it this way by saving, sharing it here with the students. Okay. Um, keep also appears, it appears in your email. It appears in your, okay, let's close that. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, we're going to go to the same account. And so we saw it in the um, calendar. We saw it also, though, in the email. So let's go to Gmail. Down the side. Come on. There you go. Okay. And we're pointing out the new features. Ah, look at that. Google Meet is now in Gmail. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. All right. So over here on the side, on the right side, you see calendar, you see keep, you see tasks, and you see contacts. And so again, you can send that keep note that we made, and let's put it into an email. So let's say we have an email to our student, student's address. Okay. I think it's there, a student. Okay. And so here I want that keep. So. I'm not seeing how I'm going to get the keep message here. I think the messages go from here to here, not here to here. Okay, so I would have to take Zara's email and email it, and it would then appear in hers. I would not be able to do it this way. Okay. Any other questions or things you would like me to demonstrate? If not, I'm going to go back to our presentation and finish it. Okay. okay. Remember the things that we've discussed. Use forms to make your attendance profile and quizzes. Demonstrate all the ways you and your students can find out what is due. Use to do and to review. Take time to create rubrics. Try out the grading using suggesting mode comment bank, private comments, set up your grade book. And if you're using a district account, definitely use import grades. This last year has been a real trial. 
It's been very hard for our students, teachers, schools, children, peers, our communities, the world. Some of the impact has yet to be reckoned, but it has also thrust online learning to the forefront. Google Classroom gives you the opportunity to set up your class online, have your students access your classroom online and move forward successfully in your class, whether it is in a real classroom or online. Contact me, especially if you want to get the extra um, homework hours um, at djensen at otan.us. The presentation slides are at this address. And then I will put into the chat the evaluation. So if you would please be so kind as to Okay, I think that's it. Yes. Okay. All right. So there's the. Um, if you have never seen Google Task, these are these are apps that you want to look at. Keep is really cool as a teacher. Tasks is really cool too, but not so much that I do it for my students, but as I would use it for me. Um, so these are new that Google is trying to add to. Um, uh, but just to add all the really wonderful things that are available, I just okay. Anybody else that you have anybody that I can help with or encourage or suggest? Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you for coming and. I hope that Google Classroom will become valuable. I knew nothing when I started Google Classroom and I made every mistake I think that's possible. My students, um, my students felt very confident about um, making mistakes because they watched me do it all the time. But that's okay. Uh, there's a lot that's intuitive with Google Classroom and they keep adding things. And so I hope that you can enjoy it. You can start small. Um, you could start with something. If you're still teaching right at this moment, do something for the last week. Uh, put a CNN article that they, CNN 10, and enjoy the video and then ask questions and enjoy it. Um, it works wonderfully for ESL. Um, now that Meet is part of Gmail, it's like, whoa. So you'll even be able to have a presentation software. Um, I appreciate all of you for being here and for helping with this. You still have questions about due dates, but I don't want to go in depth about my setup. Okay, um, due dates. I used to want to control how the dates appeared in the stream. And so I used the time and I would say, this one will show up at 7.30 in the morning. That was before class. This one will show up at 7.35. This one will show up at 7.40 because I wanted them to be in the order that to appear in the order I wanted in the stream. That was how I used the time. But with the pandemic, um, I started having to have students um, and I would open their quizzes at certain times. And so that's how I used the time um, in the in the dates to get it so that the students would only be able to see the quizzes at certain times and I could control that. So that's how I used it with due dates. Um, I had students that did all their work from their calendar. I had other students that did all their work from their Gmail, which I thought was whatever works because some of them don't have options. They're on their phones. And so whatever is easier for them, I, that's, that's great. Any other questions that I can help with? If there are no other questions, let me get out of this and that, that and can then bring up all of you and see all of you. And I appreciate all of you for being here and um, learning. And I hope you were able to learn. I hope that you are able to find Google Classroom to solve some of your problems. And because the quarter's ending, spend the summer making the Google Classroom that's ready for you in the fall. 
uh, put all your assignments in uh, a spreadsheet and then you can copy paste and just put them in and they're there. You can have all your quizzes in one place. You can just be very organized in the way you present. And uh, I hope that works for you. Thank you all. I appreciate you being here.